let's move on out of that happy subject. And let's kind of move on to polio because, you know, we kind of showed that maybe it really wasn't the smallpox vaccine that eradicated smallpox. It was going away anyways. We, ha we got uh, education and potable water. We only had a small percentage of the whole world population that was even vaccinated with smallpox to begin with. So we can see that there were some other things that came into mind. So what about, what about polio? Because that's the other thing that everybody talks about. Now, because what's the first thing that people think about when they hear the word polio? I mean, the words that come to mind. Paralysis, iron lung, kids, right? We've been so indoctrinated with that that we think those words are synonyms, like we think vaccination and immunization are synonyms. They're not. You know, polio is not a synonym for paralysis, and I'm going to show you why is that more than 90% 90, 90 of people who get exposed to the polio virus, it's a simple infection. In fact, it's so simple it looks like gastroenteritis and nobody even knows that they have it. Okay, they get headaches, sore throat, vomiting. It kind of goes on for a couple days. What's that sound like? The flu, right? A little gastroenteritis, a little bit of a flu. You get over the flu in about 72 hours, you have lifetime immunity. So that, it, so that more than 90% of the people when polio was still rather endemic in our society in the 40s and the 50s and maybe even the 60s, um, that's what happened to the vast majority of people. About 5% developed something called abort, that they call abortive poliomyelitis, which by the way, all this information about polio comes out of the Merck Manual. So the Merck Manual is a medical doctor's reference textbook that has all of this information and all of these statistics. Um, it, they, about 5% of the people get something called abortive polio, which is sort of sore throat and maybe indistinctive of any other viral illness, but they, they, it may not be so, so uh, profound. And then about 3% get something called non-paralytic polio. It happens about 14 days after viral illness, and for all intents and purposes, it looks kind of like viral meningitis. And viral meningitis can cause some limb weakness on either the arms or the legs. Because depending on what part of the brain is irritated by the meningitis, if it happens to be over and in an area of the brain that controls a particular limb, you can get some paresthesias and some numbness and a little bit of weakness that's kind of going on. That's what hyperesthesia and paresthesia means. Hyperesthesia means that you touch it and it's oversensitive. The um, paresthesia means it just feels weird and you've got sort of nummy things going on. Symptoms last up to 10 days, followed by complete recovery and lifelong immunity. Life, life, uh, complete recovery. That's an important point. Now, less than 2% of people who ever got exposed to the polio virus end up with paralysis. And there's three different kinds of paralysis. One is called spinal paralysis. That's the most common, and that's the one that we're most familiar with. That's the people who maybe have some re residual limb weakness, arm weakness, arm legs uh, paralysis. Um, and the bulbar is the type that people uh, know about in terms of um, the iron lung machine. That means it affected your brain stem and you had problems breathing. Now think about those numbers. That's 2% of this 2%. So that's 0.04% of all people who ever came exposed to the virus had this type, of, uh, th this type of problem. So that brings the numbers down even smaller because not everybody got exposed to the virus. Then the aftermath of that type of infection, the aftermath, 50% of all of these people had complete recovery. Uh, uh, what, the other 50% had some functional losses that continued to prove over a couple of years, and the amount of paralysis that was present at about 12 months was usually considered to be permanent. So if you take like a bird's eye stand back look at the, popula the population as a whole and the number of people that may have been exposed to this, the numbers start coming down and get smaller and smaller.